folks, this is all the fruit. I'm in the beautiful little mountain village of Gorbio, above the city of Monton, the French Côte d'Azur. They noticed that in those mountain villages they have a little bit more of traditional agriculture and gardening than in the cities down on the coast. So I want to see what I can find around here. Starting out on the village square, of course a couple olives. This was the main cash crop here for hundreds, probably for thousands of years. <laughs> in the cities, well, down on the coast there are olives. Uh, the oldest one is the oldest tree of France, 2,800 years old. This oldest uh, olive cultivation in the Western Mediterranean. So of course there will be olives. Also grapevines, also very traditional. Here, by the way, the ancient elm tree of Gorbio. It's supposed to be one of the most remarkable trees of France. And yeah, not a fruit tree in the classical sense, but still really amazing. And here on this restaurant, they seem to be cultivating some of the local zucchini varieties. Well, some of the local pumpkin varieties. Yes, this looks like trombonette, a very, a very typical thing for the, a very typical variety for the Italian Riviera and apparently also for the Côte d'Azur. It's even impressive. It's even more impressive from this side. Now that the bus is gone, look at the size of this thing. Beautiful. An orange tree. I'm not sure is the, if so far up the hills this was a main cash crop or is this a recent introduction of the late 20th and early 21st century they sure like the trombonette around here well it's a tasty zucchini like thing also lots of tomatoes they grow very well in the southern sun blue passion flower with its orange fruits here they could grow tastier passion fruits. Why do they all grow those blue ones? I mean, yeah, they are pretty, but the flowers of the tastier ones are even prettier. Old grapevines. Here are a couple more old citruses. Cherry plum, probably the most underappreciated fruit of Europe. This is a plum that grows like a wheat and produces very reliably. And here a lockwood. An introduction from Japan and this must be a very late variety because look there are still a couple shiveled up fruits here and here a really ancient olive tree here a couple more plums which need more care those look like some sort of gauges or mirabels not sure from here not sure without tasting them they do have a local camping. <laughs> do I look like I'm using official camping sites? Do I look like I pay to sleep outdoors? Oh my, what is happening to my, to my screen? It's getting worse by the day. Fig trees, still hoping to find at least one fig tree, one ripe fig tree along the street and eat my full. Here are a couple grapes. I don't think anybody is harvesting them. They're almost ripe. Mm. Some traditional variety. Here are a couple really tiny blue plums. Also looks like a traditional variety. Modern blue plum varieties are also usually much bigger. An apple and the peach tree growing among the yuccas. Lots of plums here. Those mountain villages have a lot of plums for whatever reason. And also, of course, a lot of figs. A laurel cherry. Here it's used as an ornamental, but I'm one of the people who know that it's edible. Or there's a more plums. And here, a white mulberry. A variety with really, really huge leaves. It's funny, the leaves down here are really tiny. Some of the leaves on the upper branches. Look at them. They are the size of pizzas. 
I don't know, I guess it was pruned severely so a couple branches developed giant leaves. Even up here, there are avocado trees. Look at that. It's growing reasonably well. We are high above the city of Monton, the most subtropical city in continental France. The city is hidden behind those low hills which are behind the giant freeway bridge, but you can see the suburbs down there. Subtropical stuff is pretty common. Up here, we should be around five or six hundred meters above sea level. Over there is the ancient, uh, is the ancient village of Gorbio. I guess those are the new neighborhoods which got built in the 20th century. A cherry tree, by the way. Yeah, here is this funny combination of cherry and avocado growing almost next to each other. Beautiful grapes on a pergola, but too high for me to reach. Those grapes are ripe. That looks like the perla my grandfather used to grow in the Balkan mountains. But with my heavy luggage, I don't want to climb all those rubble walls. Lentisk, a wild pistachio native to the area. The fruits of this pistachio are not edible, but the sap of this plant, which is also called the mustix, was masticated for many thousands of years as a chewing gum. However, I cannot find a nice good drop of sap here to masticate. What a pity. The terebint or turpentine tree, that's another native pistachio. The lentisk or the mastix over there is evergreen. The terebint is deciduous. And the terebint is supposed to have edible fruits. I've never eaten properly ripe ones. Well, the nuts or seeds inside. But when you eat the unripe ones with the fruit together, they have a pleasant sourness. It tastes more or less like a little bit like Indian mangoes. A bay leaf or laurel tree, this is also native to the area. And here, um, this is a Mahalep cherry, Prunus Mahalep, cherry with small bitter fruits, and nevertheless they're edible and not too bad. Virginia creeper, an ornamental relative of the grapevine, but the fruits are too rich in oxalate. Finally, an olive tree hanging full of fruits, some of them are even ripe. Oh, not really ripe and quite tough. Half ripe. This one looks riper. Mm -hmm. Just only pick the soft ones. Mm. Kind of an inferior variety. A feral plant growing out of the wall. But good enough for a hungry forager like me. If I didn't have some bread and cheese in my backpack, this would probably suffice as a dinner. Some feral blue plums growing above those stalks. The fruits have already dropped. This is no cherry plum. This is some interesting feral blue plum variety. Different from the other feral blue plum varieties I found in the area. As you can see, commercial, commercial little olive groves are still pretty common. But if you look at this whole slope over there, this is all abandoned olive groves. Shut your trap, parent lover. Look at this bounty of blue passion fruits. I should, I should keep calling it blue passion flower because the fruits are not blue. They're clearly orange. And when you eat the inside, it's blood red. Mm. The trick here is never chew 
because the seeds of this one are not too hard and they are bitter. Mm. As long as you don't chew. Mm. It's quite a pleasurable experience. Mm. Ah. But I like hearing the seeds crack between my teeth. I like to chew this stuff. Well, then I have to eat bitter stuff. This is not an abandoned village as you could see. Especially from the first clips. Totally a live village. I bet they all think, what is this homeless person going? He went past the official, oh, here by the way, Blackthorn. Blackthorn is one parent species of the of all our domestic plums and uh, especially in the western world and cherry plum is the other parent species so now we got both parent species together maybe they'll make a new plum but we will never know because we will think that it is some feral some feral domestic plum and not a new hybridization event yeah what they wanted to say they think so this homeless person he walked past the camping site He's eating all our fruit from fences and walls. And where is he walking now? Uh, walking to this big cliff over there. Let's see where he's going. Put the dogs after him now. People here are nice. They don't think things like that. The trail is more wild. Descending into the ravine that separates the village hill from the cliffs on the other side. Ooh. More tasty fix here. Good, good stuff. Mom. Nice and cool and cozy here. Lamps quarters. Mm. Mm. Still tender enough even in the middle of the summer. Mm. Plantago Mayor, I could totally also eat it. What have we here? Some sort of mint. Mm. No, this is the. Mm. Mm. This is Melissa officinalis. Mm, wonderful smell of lemon. And here, black nightshade. The Europeans think it's toxic. The Asians eat the fruits. The Africans eat the leaves as a spinach. Who is right? I bet the Asians think the leaves are toxic. And the Africans think the fruits are toxic. But I think the Europeans are most the most wrong of all of them. Burdock. This is also a commercially grown plant in Asia. They like especially the big, thick roots. In Europe nobody has heard about eating burdock. Look at this. This is an old trail. A wall on this side. A row of stones on this side. Those stones here have also been laid. Where did this trail go? Just to a couple random, random agricultural terraces? Or was this the old road into the mountains? A young feral walnut. If I find an older one, the nuts should already be edible. They taste nothing like really ripe desiccated walnuts. But I prefer them in the state in which they are now, but this tree will not produce for many years to come. White asparagus, asparagus albus. Every Italian forages this thing in spring. And here in the area I hear just as much Italian and Monegassian and uh, Ligurian as I hear French. So I bet even here a lot of people know about this. But now in summer, this stuff is too tough and not edible anymore. Look at the beautiful old handmade pavement. Here a feral lockwood, Eriobotria japonica. It uh, naturalizes quite easily in those Mediterranean settings, especially if there is enough water. Those are karst mountains, meaning they are made of limestone, which is uh, were very water permeable, so all the limestone from up there, all the water that desic uh, that desiccates into the no, that percolates into the rocks up there will come up 
will come out somewhere down here. However, we are still pretty high up. So this creek is more or less dry. Most of the water will go even deeper in giant cave systems which exist under every limestone landscape and will end up somewhere on the coast near Monton uh, where it where the limestone where either the limestone is replaced by other uh, by other um, by other rocks or the sea level is approached so that the water has to come out up here I see a couple water pipes but no water in the creek walnut and hazelnut next to each other let's do some foraging this is some good hazelnut it's possible that it was planted right next to the bridge here because the hazelnuts on this side they're considerably smaller although still quite large now let's get some walnuts oh. uh, where did the third one fall Okay, now collecting my nuts. Now I need to find a rock to crack them. Ooh. The small rock should be enough for the hazelnuts. Oh yeah. Look at that. They already at full size. Mm. The mosquitoes are eating me alive. There must be water somewhere he around here for them. Mm. 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 Taste this stuff. Crack the walnuts later. Let's get a couple more hazelnuts. Mm. This is a good. This is a good variety. Later I'll put down my heavy luggage and crack them. Good stuff, folks. Good stuff. See, that's what I meant when I said there is still kind of traditional agriculture here. Let's hope I will be able to see this stuff better from above. Old stone steps. Back then they didn't have roads for carts here. They would use mules to transport stuff, so steps were not a problem. So let's look at this beautiful garden. No olives here, they don't need irrigation. Couple nice big apricot trees, citrus trees, tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants and chickens apparently and grapevines in the background and again some trombonette pumpkin slash uh, slash uh, zucchini what was this almost megalithic structure used for <coughs> interesting giant reed the bamboo of the western world here it's not so giant it's not as good as bamboo doesn't get as thick and as thick and as hard as bamboo. That's why the, <coughs> the Western civilization never relied as much on the giant tree as the Eastern civilizations relied on the bamboo. Actually, researchers in Asia say <coughs> we have very few tools from the Stone Age because very few tools were made of stone, most were made of bamboo. Here in the West, bamboo never reached the giant tree never reached that importance but especially in Spain and also in other Mediterranean countries this thing was one of the most important basically technological plant you could plants you could think of another garden grapevines citruses a plum and a cherry here a ticket of feral uh, fix but not a single one is in season I think those already had their season weeks ago. Oh, let's see, or maybe two. Nah, unedible caprifix. Doesn't matter when they have their season. There is nothing edible on those trees. Rubus cesius, the blue blackberry. 
you cannot call it blueberry that name is already taken but it's basically a blackberry that's blue let's see if you find the fruit somewhere two meters further i find the black blackberry however it's red it's probably the native rubus olmifolius here there a couple ripe ones really tasty stuff they taste different from the blackberries in central europe mm. Mm. yummy decent sized tree stamped walnut tree I'm sure it's producing a lot some of them are falling on the ground mm. Was even the reason for this to fall taking it with me and here the ants are bringing in a heavy harvest of hop hornbeam species of hornbeam while well, the fruits look like hop fruits you cannot make you cannot make beer from them but apparently you should be able to eat them however they are very itchy we leave them to the ants more feral plums but already all the fruits are gone. I see a couple desiccated ones and more black blackberries. Not the blue variety yet. Lots of small black fruits on the ground. Mahalep cherry fruits. The season for those is over. Maybe some of the mummified fruits on the tree will still be sweet. Tastes like very dry cherry, but not worth the trouble. Black nightshade. Good stuff. Mm. They might be small, but they are tasty. Like why? Quite good quality tomatoes the garden on the other side is basically made into big boulders but at least those big boulders are more or less at the bottom of the ravine so water availability old apricot tree in the background and here an ancient olive tree and here <clears throat> again a lot of nice Good blackberries. This khaki tree did not receive proper care, so it looks it looks like it dropped all its fruits. I oh, know I see one or two up there, but they will be in season in three or four months. In this garden, you can see the use of the giant reeds. The reeds along this creek are not really giant. Normal reeds of this size, you couldn't use them; they are too soft. But even small giant reeds will provide you with support strong enough for beans and tomatoes and other things. I hope you can see them in the background. Especially if you go to Spain and go to a rural museum or visit abandoned villages, they will produce almost anything out of giant reed and halfa grass. A grass tough as ropes and the reed tough as bamboo. Here, by the way, two of those elongated feral plums still hanging on the... Mm, totally ripe, but not blue. Hmm. Interesting. A pinkish feral variety. Hmm. Hmm. Very sweet and tasty. Those gardens were abandoned, then somebody tried clearing them, but it's tough work. Clearing such abandoned gardens with rubble walls, and lots of metal, is part of my work. <laughs> and along of young people, a lot of young people either try to work for me or buy or rent such a garden on rubble wall terraces. Two thirds of them give up before the end of the second year. It's a very typical setting all over Europe. The old mountain agriculture is being abandoned. Basically nowadays we have mostly agriculture in the big flat lowlands, but those terraces and stuff 
it's a lot of work to work them so they're being abandoned all over Europe look at this slope on the other side another huge abandoned olive plantation in a couple of decades it will not be possible to restore this olive plantation anymore maybe you can tell me it's an ancient olive plantation worth more for history biodiversity whatever environment business then the forest that will come up on those lands prickly pears young prickly pears no fruits on them I wonder if it's not too dry up here and somebody has planted new lemons but not watered them and so they are dying tasty rose hips from the canine group probably look at it those are the rose hips from last year probably they were edible well into spring and now very soon the next generation as soon as they are soft they are edible if you want to use them for tea you can use both generations now you can use the mummified old generation and the still hard young generation but if you want to eat them to suck out the flesh then you need them in a soft state or at least in a soft tish state the folks who are restoring this garden planted a couple peruvian apple cacti it's an exotic plant but not invasive like the prickly pear but if they are lucky in a couple years they'll have a lot of tasty fruits here a prickly pear with fruits but they are still too green on the coast the first ones are already ripening but I guess here everything or most fruits here come a little bit later wild garlic last night I had some with my dinner not bad stuff you use the flowers because the leaves they have dried up months ago I also use some thyme this probably thyme was vulgaris the stuff that gets on all the Italian pizzas and so on this is pretty high quality ancient masonry still very rough uh, this must have been a, an important path either the connection to the neighboring village of Saint Agnes or maybe to some resource in the hills maybe summer pastures maybe even a trading route to the Alps the mountains get pretty high around here all those olives and citruses and other fruits would be highly sought after just a hundred kilometers away from here I'm away from the village barely hearing the church bells surrounded by cliffs on every side what's interesting there are no relics of any cultivation around here of any orchards or olive groves everything I see around me is wild native original stuff except for those pine trees over there those are remnants of afforestation events in the 20th century I want to find a place to sleep around here but there is, I need about two square meters which are more or less flat European Saskatoon a Melanchia rovales. It is a pretty early season, so all the fruits are gone. Not as tasty as some of the American species, but still quite good stuff to forage. A service tree, a tasty native fruit. You might think this is a very young specimen, but no, it's growing from the stump of an old one. See, the old one was probably also a bush, so it was chopped off many times. Not in season, but quite a good stuff around September. Wild carrots, those are pretty common around Europe. You recognize them by hundreds of white flowers and one black, or purple or red or pink one in the middle, but definitely darker. However, be careful. I've never foraged them a lot, but it's being said that especially the leaves and the flowers can irritate your skin now let's crack the nuts my front camera is completely messed up well for the hazelnuts here is one it's just a simple 
rock on rock and the hazelnut in between but the walnuts we have a different technique never do this folks people have tried to copy me and they've ended up in the emergency room so just watch but don't do this well I take a knife and put it right between the two shells of the walnut how do I know where exactly the two shells of the walnut are joined well that's a secret then I pray the nut apart I don't think you can see much but sorry that's my horrible phone then I take the knife again and cut out everything which is inside the thick shell if I pop this into my mouth it will taste disgusting first I have to remove the pith which is inside uh, the shell which I cut out together with the edible part this when the walnut is ripe this will not look like white pith anymore those will be brown skins which will you will throw away they are dry but at least they don't taste disgusting now they taste really bad so I remove I remove all the pit and then tap with the sprain like seed now if the walnut was ripe you would eat this part if you try to eat this part now it will be horribly disgusting because the yellow skin which is around the walnut seed is very bitter and astringent before it's fully ripe and desiccated so we have to peel off the yellow skin mm. super tasty fresh walnut <laughs> hard to describe it's something between a nut and a fruit very tasty of course this is a lot of work for such a small seed that's why giant walnut varieties were developed which are very hard to dry if you want to preserve them for the winter you have to put in a lot of work but if you want to eat them fresh it's the same amount of work as for a small walnut but you end up with five times the with five times the edible flesh after the hard work day i reward myself with the monster deliciosa fruit maybe the tastiest fruit in the world how do you eat a fruit which is a real monster the answer is carefully very carefully and only about two to three centimeters or an inch a day that way the oxalates in the fruit will sting you very painfully but it will be worth it because of the super Mm, the super tasty mm. if you try to peel off more than an inch a day <coughs> you're gonna regret it for hours